Friends, welcome to the second Wednesday in Lent. This is a sermon that I preached just a few moments ago at Cross of Glory with people from Prince of Peace and Cross of Glory. Uh, but many of you at Prince of Peace were not able to attend, so I wanted to send out a recording of this message for you to enjoy at home. And I pray that you're well as I record this for you and send it off. The reading for today is from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Dear friends, grace to you from the one who gives grace, and comfort to you from the one who brings comfort, consolation to you from the church that bears his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. This Lent, we are focusing on tears. And that's an odd phrase, focusing on tears, because tears obscure our vision. In our eyes, tears prevent focus. They can actually be blinding, in that we can't always see through our tears. But scripture helps us to see. And scripture is not silent about tears. We cry to God. We cry in pain. We cry out. We cry at injustice. We cry at death and at the wages of sin. Even Jesus himself cried at the death of a dear friend, Lazarus. And he cried out in desperation from the cross where he died. Scripture is not silent about tears. But at the same time, Scripture also proclaims that for everything there is a season. We hear it, and we might hear the musical adaptation in our heads, turn, turn, turn. I won't sing it for you, but I think it's fair to say that the sentiment of the Ecclesiastes reading is fundamental to our understanding of God's omnipotent reign over the world that God created. God's omnipotent reign over even our tears. There is a season. We who share this life together are well aware how seasons work. We have seasons of the year. We have growing seasons. We have professional sports seasons. We have holiday seasons. In a time of climate change, we're paying special attention to the seasons and how they are changing. And depending on where you live, there are different seasons. Monsoon season, hurricane season, dry season. The world is full of seasons, mating season, fishing season. For everything, there is a season, Ecclesiastes proclaims. The underlying promise and the assurance in that is that there is nothing in all of creation that happens outside and outside of the experience of the realm of God. Every possible thing that we see and we live and we experience that we share or that we hold tightly to ourselves occurs inside 
the realm of God. People of faith take comfort in that. I suspect the message of Ecclesiastes is intended to build trust and faith in the midst of times that we cannot understand. Yet therein lies one of the real challenges of faith. If everything happens inside the realm of God, then what are we to make of the things that cause us to weep, to cry, to mourn, to suffer, to shed tears? In many ways, that's a dangerous question to ask. Dangerous because I don't always know that there is any way to find an adequate answer, outside of God, that is. School shootings, movie theater shootings, grocery store shootings, any act of gun violence, cancers, the suffering and death that results from disease, COVID, Huntington's chorea, Lou Gehrig's disease, alcoholism and drug addictions, Alzheimer's, any of the myriad of conditions that drug, advertise, play, drug advertisers place before us so often when we watch TV. And then there are disasters, earthquakes, famines, droughts or floods, wars, racism prejudicial laws and injustice, theft, murder, adultery, random senseless acts of violence, threats, bombings, suicide. I think I can stop there because I think we all understand the point. As the bumper sticker says, shit happens. Yes, I said it. Please don't fire me. To put it another way, for everything there is a season. Sometimes I'm not sure that there's comfort in that because we ask ourselves if for everything there is a season and a time and a purpose under heaven, then is it God's will that all these things happen? That is a dangerous question. My guess is you've probably asked it. I have. I believe with all my heart that claiming everything happens because of God's will is problematic. It's easy. It's easy to make that claim in an effort to force people, even ourselves, to convince people, even ourselves, to believe and to trust. It's easy to claim that, that everything happens because of God's will, in an effort to demonstrate our force of belief and our trust. But I don't believe it. There are accidents. Things go wrong. Things happen that God does not intend to happen. I know that, and I know the heart of God, because Jesus revealed the heart of God. Jesus reveals the heart of God to all of us, the heart of God who so greatly loves the world that a son was sent to save. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. If that sounds familiar, that was the message from just days ago in Sunday when we gathered here for worship. Jesus reveals to us a God who is loving and saving. Loving and saving in every season. Even the seasons that bring us tears. This moment right now is in the season of Lent, but it is a moment of good news in that season of Lent. You see, seasons can overlap. Nothing happens in isolation or in its own vacuum. 
in its own cosmic emptiness. Shit happens. For everything there is a season, but none of it happens outside of the realm of God, who is loving and saving. Scripture talks about this. Scripture talks about this directly. Scripture knows that nothing happens outside of the realm of God who's loving and saving. But that doesn't mean things happen that don't bring us to tears. What then are we to say of these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's chosen, God's loved? It is God who justifies, so who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or any of those things I mentioned earlier in this message? It is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, no, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, or height, or depth, nor anything else in all of creation for which there is a season will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Shit happens, but none of it will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That is not an excuse. Those words that I just said are not even my words. They're in scripture. And they're not an excuse for what happens. They are a promise. They're not an excuse. They're a new covenant that Jesus sealed with his own blood. It's not an excuse. It is the truth. And it's a truth that is powerful. Powerful enough to turn mourning into dancing? There's a season for that. Is it powerful enough to turn wailing into wonder? There's a season for that. Powerful enough to save a wretch like me? There's a season for that. Powerful enough to raise Jesus from the dead? There's a season for that. In church, we call it Easter. Powerful enough to turn death into life for you and for me? Yes, there is a season for that. Because for everything, there is a season.